<laughs> What's up, you make sure you like the video. Comment and subscribe. Okay. Alright, we out subscribe. Of here. <laughs> See ya. Before this video starts, make sure you go follow our podcast on Spotify. Search up Guardian of the Ring or the Daniels Kids and it will pop up. Yo, what's good, y'all? Today we're going to be going over the story of Amari Raw. So before we even get into this, I'm just going to put some of uh, O's highlights in the background. It's not really going to have correlation to, you know, where the story is as I'm going. And I wrote this by myself. It ain't like generator or anything. I just made it up. Uh, if y'all want to see more stories, let me know in the comment section who what players I'm thinking about. Potentially Curtis Thornton, Nate Easley, Alton. Those are some guys I'm thinking about doing storylines for, but we're going to start with QB1. Oh, um, let's get right into it. So before high school, right? O was born in upstate New York. He grew up in Middletown, and at the age of six, he was in, put in three different sports by his dad. You know, he was put in basketball, football, and track. He played Pop Warner with future number one overall pick, Jamie Daniels, and his brother, who's also projected to be a top ten pick in this upcoming draft, Juan Daniels. And that year, he was a starting quarterback and cornerback on the team that won a Pop Warner Super Bowl national championship. He was a standout athlete through, throughout middle school, and that led to him drawing a lot of attention throughout the state and recruiting to the, one of the type, top sports high schools in New York, Cardinal Hayes in the Bronx. Uh, now, Cardinal, they're a good program, basketball and football-wise, top 10 in both sports, respectively. So while O was first getting adjusted to the city, as he had lived upstate his whole life, he had a hard time really getting used to it, something he never did before, and that would carry over to his preference in the NFL. The city life was new to him, man. Uh, Oak played for Cardinal Hayes, and he was a three-year starter in football, his, for, his first sport that he played, his first love. But many argue he's a much better basketball player. In football, as a sophomore, he started in 10 games, and he threw for two, 2,216 yards with 16 touchdowns and eight picks, while adding 602 yards on the ground and five rushing touchdowns. Now, with two games to go in the season, he broke his ankle in football, so he had to miss all the basketball season and the last two football games of the year, one of which was the playoff game in which they got eliminated in. So, you know, that kind of motivated O, added some fuel to his fire. And since he couldn't play basketball that year, that uh, that, that made him more motivated. So, as a junior, he he, he uh, fully recovered to his from his ankle injury. He played in 12 games, and he did increase his passing numbers significantly. He threw for 3,289 yards with 24 touchdowns and only four picks in that season. He was worse on the ground because of the lingering ankle injury, um, and he only rushed for 312 yards and two touchdowns. Now, in his only season in high school playing basketball, he was a starter on the Cardinal Hayes team, but they did lose in the state championship to a loaded Archbishop Malloy team. I mean, that team was stacked, but he did average 19 points per game over the course of the season, five, five assists, uh, two boards, and he broke Jamal Masburn's uh, single-game score record by putting up 64 points in a single game. And everybody knows Jamal Masburn was a bucket, so you know, that's an insane accomplishment. His last year in high school, his senior year, as a starter at Cardinal Hayes, he broke former Wisconsin QB Jack Cohen's New York State record for yards and, and touchdowns in a single season. Pa- I mean, passing yards, not rushing. Uh, Jack couldn't run. <laughs> uh, he, he did win the state championship while being named New York's Mr. Football. He threw for 3,867 3, yards, which was obviously a record, with 46 passing touchdowns, another record. 700 yards on the ground, on the dot, with 13 rushing touchdowns, led to him being invited to the Under Armour All-American football game. He was rated as a four-star uh, recruit by 24-7, ESPN, and Rivals, all the major outlets for recruiting. He was a consensus eighth-best quarterback in his class across the country. Um... And he was consensus the third best dual threat. Um, consensus meaning of course the three platforms, 24/7, ESPN, and Rivals. Um, in terms of his overall ranking in the country, he was ranked 56 by ESPN, 58 by Rivals, and 55th by 24/7. He had offers from 40 plus schools. Some some of those big names were Penn State, Louisville, Ohio State, Clemson, LSU, and Florida. After eventually cutting that list down to four teams, which was Ohio State, Clemson, LSU, and Penn State, he committed to Penn State. Uh, because, you know, he didn't really like the city environment, and he wanted to be kind of close to home, and Penn State was that spot for him. At Penn State, he was registered his first year because they had Chase McSorley, the senior quarterback, uh, who threw it on a dime like he wasn't even trying. 
as their starter. He battled for the spot in his freshman freshman year with an incoming true freshman recruit that they had bought in. The number one quarterback in the class the next year committed to Penn State. His name, Damian Spears. And Penn State, they decided at and owes Richards freshman year to go with Spears as a starter in the future of the program. And Amari, being a smart cat he was, he knew that as long as Spears was in school, they wasn't really going to give him a chance. So he put his name in the transfer portal. Not many big schools really pursue him coming out of the transfer portal because you could just get a true freshman out of high school and he has way more years, especially since O would be an incoming redshirt sophomore. His his name flew very much under the radar, and he only got offers from teams such as Illinois State, which is FCS school, NIU, uh, Group of Five, USF, Group of Five, FAU, Group of Five, and Southern Miss. He committed to NIU. He wanted to play uh, um, immediately, but the NCAA, they declined his waiver, and they forced him to sit out another year. So in his first year as a college starter, he was a red shirt junior. Going from four star recruit to red shirt junior starter, that really took a hit on him. But that season, he gave everybody what they was waiting for. Uh, NIU went nine and five on the season, which is a respectable record. Not excellent, but respectable. Omari had decent numbers. He threw for two hundred, uh, I mean twenty five hundred fifty four yards and nineteen touchdowns. He was a little bit of a turnover machine in that season, though, throwing eleven picks. He had 598 yards rushing and seven rushing scores on the on the ground, leading the NIU Huskies to a MAC championship and an appearance in the Lending Tree Bowl, which they lost to none other than Damian Spears and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Not seeing his name on many draft boards, Amari did what most people would do in that situation, using his final year of eligibility and returning to the NIU Huskies as a fifth-year senior. Many people expected a lot out of this team, having returning a lot of starters, and during his final year of college, they expected nothing less than a MAC championship and potentially teetering on the edge of the New Year's Six bowl game berth. The NIU Huskies, though, they did not live up to those expectations. Finishing the season a disappointing 6-7, and seven, and they lost their bowl game to Western Kentucky. O had 2,787 yards and 22 touchdowns passing along with eight interceptions to pair with 512 rushing yards and 13 touchdowns. So, you know, for him, at least the 35, 35 total touchdowns was good, but, I mean, th those yards, th th they weren't really a jump for him, you know? So the scouts were kind of looking at that weird. They doubted his accuracy a lot. Uh, everyone knew that O oh, had a cannon of an arm. He could throw it as far as a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL, but they doubted his accuracy. And he was a smaller quarterback. He was only six foot flat, and he only weighs in at two twelve. So his four, his, him running the four five seven forty time wasn't really helping him because now they, they, they classify him in the realm of average athlete, and they already had the notion in their head he wouldn't be able to make the NFL throws. Therefore, he went and drafted in the twenty twenty one NFL draft. This is the same draft in which Damian Spears went number one overall. He was signed as an undrafted free agent in UDFA to the Buccaneers uh, for training camp. But after camp and preseason, Tampa Bay decided to cut him from the 53-man ro roster. They eventually signed him to, the pra to their practice squad and had him sitting there for a good amount of time. During week six of the regular season, though, he was picked up from the Buccaneers practice squad to the active roster of Austin Armadillos to be their backup quarterback after uh, head coach Isaiah Daniels decided that Kyle Allen just simply wasn't a good enough quarterback to be my backup because he sucks. Um, Amari didn't want to go to the Dillos, really, because not only did they have a city environment that he hadn't really ever liked his whole life, but their quarterback, the one who just overshadowed him his whole life, Damian Spears, was their starter. He took the offer as the backup, though. He just kept working. After Spears and teammate Nate easily torched the Saints in Week 11, Ross got his first NFL start, going 5-8 for eight 75 yards. No touchdowns, one pick, and he only had negative two yards on the ground. Not, not extremely impressive. After the Dillos clinched the one seed in that season, though, he did get his first NFL start in Week 17 against the San Francisco 49ers. He played decent, going 22-33 for 33 passing, 239 yards, two tuds, but he also had two picks. He did have a 23 yards on the ground and a rush and tutty that game, so, you know, that helped him. And throughout the playoff run of the Dillos, he sat on the sideline watching his teammate, Damian Spears, his rival, 
win a Super Bowl MVP. I mean, I guess. I mean, he didn't really win it, but, like, you know, we could say that from, like, you know, the Madden standpoint, but I'm pretty sure Saquon won it. You know what I'm saying? And hoist up the Super Bowl trophy, Spears did. Even though this made, oh, a Super Bowl champ, he still had that motivation. He had that chip in his shoulder. He wanted to be a starter in the league, and he didn't care if that meant in all centers elsewhere. Uh, so he wanted to hoist, hoist up his own Super Bowl trophy. And in the first game of the year, after Spears and the, spot, and the starters jumped out to a 38-6 year lead, oh, got in. He went 9-for-9, nine nine showing constant improvement from last year, 116 yards and a passing touchdown. So he didn't miss. He rushed for 44 yards on three carries, and he did fumble. No rushing touchdowns. And, you know, that really encouraged Coach Isaiah Daniels to look at him as a viable option if Spears ever didn't deliver. And everybody knows about Spears' interception issue, so oh, eventually got his chance. Um, after the uh, Dillers lost to the Tennessee Titans, and Spears started really slow against the New Orleans Saints, he was put in the game with a chance to win the, game, the, the starting job for good. He came in, and he delivered the goods, and he never looked back. Except for that one time in Week 17, you know, when they were playing the Bears, he threw four picks. But we're not going to talk about that right now. We're just going to let that slide and talk about the good stuff about all right now, because it's historic, dang women. You feel me? Um... After handling the Seahawks and the Cardinals in the playoffs with a barrage of rushing touchdowns, he now looks to hoist up his own Super Bowl trophy. And that was the story of Omar Ross. Let me know if y'all want me to, like, you know, write up another script for another guy on our team, uh, on another team. I don't care. I'll write stories, bro. Um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. I'm out of here, y'all.